In this problem, we have three masses as shown in the figure. The surface is frictionless, the pulleys are massless, and we want to know the acceleration of mass B and the tensions in the wires. Since I know the pulleys are massless, I know the tension on either side of the pulley is the same, but the wires on either side of mass B will not have the same tension. So I've identified the wire on the right with tension one and the one on the left with tension two. I don't use vectors here. I'm looking just at the magnitude of the tension within the wire. The first step is what sort of physics can I apply? I'm pretty clear I want to apply Newton's second law to this problem. So that means I have to start by choosing a single object and then isolate that object. Since I want to know the acceleration of mass B, I'm going to start with that one. So what are the forces on mass B? Well, there's a tension force to the right due to tension one, and there's a tension force to the left due to tension two. There's a contact force between the surface and mass B, but I was told that there's no friction in this problem, that it's frictionless. That means the contact force horizontally is zero. And in my model where I have just one dimensional horizontal motion, I'm ignoring any vertical forces. So the only tensions I have for mass B is tension one and tension two. Now I want to sum the forces using a free body diagram. My free body diagram, I represent the object with a dot, the forces point in the respective directions, and I have a coordinate system I've identified positive to the right. Since I'm just in one dimension, I have this easy notation where the sign gives me the direction of the force and I just use the magnitudes. So tension one is positive direction and tension two is in the negative direction. I want to set these equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object, which here is mass B, so I've identified the mass and the acceleration with subscripts B. Now the acceleration is vector, and so the magnitude then is the mass of B time the magnitude of the acceleration of B, and I think it's pointing to the right. I have a guess on how these things work. B is being pulled on by two wires, each attached to a different mass, both of which are hanging off of pulleys, but since mass A is larger, I've got a very good idea. Mass A is going to fall, mass B is going to move to the right, and mass C is going to rise. And I know that if I'm wrong, I'll end up with a negative acceleration for this at the end. The difference of the magnitudes of the two tensions will be the mass of B times the acceleration of B. So am I done? No. <laughs> well, I want to find the acceleration that's there. I do not know what either uh, of the tensions are. I only know the masses. So I've got to look at other objects. So I'm going to choose a new object and isolate it. I'll look at mass A this time. What are the forces on mass A? Well, it's connected to tension one. And so there's a tension force, but on mass A, it is directed up. There's a force due to gravity on mass A, and it acts down, and it has a magnitude of the mass of A times the acceleration due to gravity G. So I want to sum these forces using a free body diagram. So I've represented that here with a dot, the vectors pointing in the respective directions, their tail on the dot, tension one and the force due to gravity. I need a coordinate system which chooses a positive direction. I've chosen the positive direction to be down. And why is that? Well, like I just said, you know, I think because mass A is heavier than mass C, that when this system accelerates, mass A is going to accelerate down. So if I gave put my positive axis in that direction, then my acceleration of A will be positive, and I'd like for that to be the case. So I want to add these objects together, and in my one-dimensional vector notation, I have the magnitude, and then the sign indicates the direction of the force. So I have a positive force due to gravity added to the negative tension in wire one. So I set this equal to mass times acceleration of that one object. It's a vector, and I believe that it's going to be directed down, and I've indicated with subscripts A to indicate it's the mass of A times the acceleration of A. I've brought back what I learned from my Newton's second law analysis of mass B, and now do I have enough? What can I say about acceleration A and B? Well, to do that, let's take a look at how the objects move together. Note that I gave the positive axis for mass B to the right, where the positive axis for mass A is down. And since they're connected by this wire, which we assume never changes in length, every small step 
that a takes down is exactly equal to the small step that b takes to the right. And if this takes during a very small time element, dt, I can divide both sides by that time element. Now these at very small times are differentials. If the functions are well behaved, the ratio of differentials is equal to the derivative. So this tells me that the velocities are the same. I can differentiate them again, and this tells me that the accelerations are the same. And so the acceleration of a is equal to the acceleration of b, which then I just indicate as a without a subscript. This would not have been the case if I did not have my coordinate systems this way. If I had, for example, the coordinate system of mass a pointed up, then the acceleration of a would equal negative the acceleration of b. So when you do this, you have to be careful, and it depends on your situation and your choice of coordinate systems. Well, do we have enough to solve now? We don't know a, and we don't know t1 and t2. So we have three unknowns and only two independent equations, and so we do not have enough still. Conveniently, we still have one more object that we can analyze. And so we can apply Newton's second law to this final object. So what are the forces? This one has a tension due to wire two, that's up, and the force due to gravity on it, which is down. We want to sum these using a free body diagram, which I've shown here with T2 up and the force of gravity down. Now I need a coordinate system, and I've identified my positive to be up in this case. So I have the positive direction for each free body diagram in the direction of the motion that I expect. That way, assuming I'm right, my, all my accelerations will be positive. So I want to add these, and in my one-dimensional vector notation, the signs indicate direction. I set them equal to the mass of that one object, which is the mass of C, times the acceleration of that one object. Now that's a vector, and so its magnitude is the mass of c times the magnitude of the acceleration of c, and I believe that's to be up. I've brought back the other two equations from before. Do I still have enough to solve? Well, it looks like I'm good as long as I have a relationship between the acceleration of c and the accelerations from before. Each infinitesimal step of c is going to match the infinitesimal step of b because I have the positive directions all going in the same way. So the accelerations are all the same. And now what are my unknowns? I'm missing a, t1, and t2, three unknowns, three equations. That means, yay, I should have enough information to solve. So I've rewritten those three equations here, and I could go and solve one for t1 and substitute it into the, into, uh, the middle equation, solve equation three for t2 and substitute it. But let's just take a step back and look at this and think about all the different ways I can solve equations. And it seems to me that if I just add these three equations together, it's going to simplify nice, nicely. If I add all the equations, I get a minus t1 plus t1, they cancel, minus t2 plus t2, those cancel, and I get a mass of a times g plus mass of c times g, and then on the other side, I just get all of the masses times a. I just add up all three of those terms, I factor out the acceleration from there. And so that makes it easy enough to solve for A, which I have here, which is the difference between mass A and mass C divided by the total mass times G. Now before I go on, now that I have an expression for A, I want to think, does this make sense? Then it certainly does. Both mass A and mass C are competing to pull B around. The way I've set it up is that if mass A is larger than mass C, everything's going to be moving in the positive direction that I've defined my coordinate system, and that's represented in this equation. Of course, if I change my masses and make mass C larger than mass A, this acceleration will be negative, which makes sense. Then A will be going up, C will be going down in the opposite direction that I assigned the positive axes in my free body diagrams. And it does make sense that the denominator has all of the masses in it. If any of the masses are larger, it should lower my acceleration. Well, I did have values for these, three kilograms minus one, and ma mass of B was two. And so I end up with acceleration of one third, the acceleration due to gravity. If I want to find the tensions, I can use this equation to solve for T1. If I bring T1 on the other side to positive and then bring MA on the other side, that gives me a negative ma 
times g minus mass of a times a, factor out the mass of a, and I get mass of a times the difference between g minus a. a was just one-thirds g, so the difference is two-thirds g, and I get the final answer in units of newtons, because there's a kilogram in there, two times the acceleration due to gravity. Finally, tension two, I can use this equation to solve for that, bring positive mcg on the other side, factor out the mc, and I get the mass of c times g plus a. G is one, a is one-thirds g, so the, adding those together is four-thirds g, and of course those are both in newtons, because there's a unit of kilograms in here. Uh, g has units of meters per second squared, inside of it, and so A is in the proper units as well. Finally, does this make sense? The acceleration has to be less than G, for sure, and then these, I don't have much to compare them to, but they're not really high or low or negative, for example, so that gives me some confidence that I've come up with the right answer.